Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we will be speaking about how you can unlock high-performance product teams. And my name is Irina Vasilkova. I worked in product, in product marketing, in commerce, at Meta, at L'Oreal, and Avon. I'm really, really passionate about uh, teams and team management and people. And also, I'm certified um, psychological consultant in personality diagnostics. So I'm really happy to be here today with you. And as we go through the presentation, please feel free to share your comments and questions. And I would love really to hear from you and hear your thoughts. All right. So if you would like to uh, build a really high performance product team, where should you start? You definitely should start with people and people problems. And I would like to kick off here with, uh, with the quote from the Richard uh, brands. Start with people, be a good listener, find empathy, understand emotions, communicate effectively, treating people well, and bringing out the best. And it's all critical for the success. If you have this approach, you will be able to bring products and build businesses that really understand people. So start with people first. Uh, as we go through our presentation today, we would talk to you um, about high-performing team dynamics and you will gain insights into fostering high-performance teamwork. We will unveil team personas and you will learn about different team personas and how you can actually effectively communicate with them and build a strategy of the collaboration. We will also decode the team needs and productivity equation and we'll learn about every different team need and how you could support them in achieving their needs and how this color correlates with their performance, with their motivation, with their productivity. And all these insights, they are relevant for the cross-functional teams, but also for solo function teams, such as product managers, product marketing managers, or product designers. So what, when you need to build a really high performing team, you need to have uh, some specific mindset. So what are the building blocks of this mindset? First of all, your team should be aligned to the product strategy. It means that they know short-term strategy, they know the long-term strategy, and they are aligned and committed to this strategy. And secondly, your team is customer obsessed. They are customer centric and they are data centric. What this means? It means that your team is on top of your feedback of the customers about your product. They are spending time in one-to-ones with the, your customers. They know what your customers are talking about the product in social listening. And they're obviously having a post-launch analysis to understand how the product was taken in the market. In terms of the data centric, your team is able to understand quantitative and qualitative data and take decisions accordingly to these data points. Also, it's really important that your team is empowered and result driven. It means that they feel that they are empowered to take decisions on their own level, they are trusted to do so, they are owning their own projects, their own space, and they are responsible for their actions. The other important point is about team mindset. The team feel as a one whole thing, one for all and all for one. This means that team is generally enjoying working together. They are collaborating. They have a good communication between each other. They will definitely keep things tracking. They will not allow any ball drop and they will support each other. They will support each other and they feel comfortable being together. There is no tension between your team um, mates or your team members. And if there are any issue, it can be easily fixed and it can be easily resolved. Uh, and team is curious, curious and creative. So curiosity is really important because your team is always on top of the news of the industry. They know your competitors, they try your competitors. They are very well aware about strengths and weaknesses of your product versus competition. And they are sharing these insights. They are sharing insights, ideas, they are brainstorming, and they're open-minded to do things in different ways. They are open-minded to be creative and approach tasks differently. 
And this building block is important when um, you are thinking about the, your roadmap and insights because team are bringing these insights, they are inspired, and you have a lot of things to work with together for the future of your product. Of course, if you would like to build a high-performance product team, you should be a high-performing team leader and have a mindset according to this. So what is important? It's important that you're really clear on the strategy and objectives. So you have a clear strategy in place. You have a KPIs. You know what are the objectives? What uh, is a good result um, is looking like? And your team is very well aware about this. Uh, you have a high emotional intelligence. And you have a compassion to people. High emotional intelligence is something that is that, that is natural to some people and it's not natural to the other people. And it's okay. It's something that can be really developed. And it's really important when you want to build a really uh, comfortable, uh, trustable uh, space uh, for your team and build this uh, close, warm relationship with people. Team empowerment is very important that you spend time empowering your team to take actions take decisions on their own level you trust them uh, you trust them to be responsible for their projects for their work and taking the actions accordingly also your team should know that you have always own support for them you have their backs and it's important that you're making yourself available uh, for their requests for help and if you are not able to resolve some requests of help, you are able to find the people, cross-functional teams or leadership who are able to provide this support and help resolve team and the questions they are asking to um, be resolved. Then the other important building blocks, which is relevant more to the solo teams that uh, you are managing is thinking about team professional growth. So this is, should be an ongoing mindset where you're investing time understanding their professional growth, desires, and needs, and supporting them and tracking them to the success. And last but not the least is creating safe space. Safe space is when your team is open to share their thoughts, their ideas. They are asking each other for the feedback because they know they will be heard, they will be supported, and they will get nice feedback that will help you and them um, build a stronger products. So when uh, you have a team, so how actually you can understand their personas, how you can collaborate with them effectively. There are several tools that actually um, help you identify their type of personalities. So, for example, there are various type of uh, personality tests. And my favorite one is a uh, color animal personality identifier test because it's uh, uh, quite easy to digest and it's very comprehensive and really very fun to do with your team. So the benefits of using this test is understanding the personas of your team members or teammates, understanding their strengths and differences, and learning how you can collaborate and build collaboration strategy together. So um, it's a really nice activity to do as a team. Um, in my experience, people are always very open-minded, learning about themselves and sharing these insights uh, with their colleagues and discussing and brainstorming how they can collaborate effectively as a team. So feel free to suggest this to your team. Or if you would like to learn a little bit about the other teams or about different people, you can treat this theory as a, as a guide, because uh, as we go through the presentation, you will see these personas are quite characteristic, so you will be able uh, to identify these people. All right, so as you can see on the right-hand side, we have uh, extroverted um, animals. It's a peacock and it's pumas and then panthers. And then on the left-hand side, you have introverted animals such as owl and dolphin. So typically um, in tech, uh, on the spectrum of um, oil and dolphin, you will find um, more technical roles um, like engineers, data engineers, or data scientists, or maybe researchers. And uh, on the spectrum uh, of um, 
um, panther or peacock, you will find um, the roles that are generally um, uh, they have to go to people, they have to align things, they have to communicate. Such roles, um, more um, non-technical, like product marketing, maybe comms, maybe sales. Uh, sometimes uh, PMs are actually really, really, really great uh, in these um, uh, roles. So what is the typical about uh, each um, personality type? As you can see, uh, all is more diplomatic, it's more fact finder, it's more precise, it's more logical personality. Then Panther, on the other hand side, is more action oriented, is problem solver, sometimes can came, come across as aggressive or very independent. Dolphins, on the other hand side, more lower end, they are more mature, they're really great team players, they're gentle, they're empathic, and they're questioning. And the peacock are very enthusiastic, very con convincing, they are very verbal, very optimistic and animated. Some personalities, however, could, could easily fall under the peacock. And every single type of personality um, has own motivations, core values, and things they actually need to do a little bit better. And this really uh, help us um, understand what to expect from these people. So for example, alls, they are really motivated to deliver things on very high standards, very detailed, uh, very perfection. And uh, sometimes you can see these people in that science or research, um, and they really value uh, to be right. It's important for them that the insights they are bringing, they are right. Uh, but sometimes for these people, it's really hard to make decisions and you may need to support them in these decisions. Uh, so the Panthers, on the other hand side, is motivated uh, when they have to solve the problem. They need to troubleshoot. They can um, showcase their authority. They need to develop different options. They need to reinvent some process. They're also very, very result oriented. And it's really valuable for them to achieve the result but they are not really good listeners. So it's something they need to work through. Um, dolphins, they are more motivated when they have a secure environment. They have a lot of appreciations, guarantees, um, some known routines, um, relationship is very important for them and they are really good at that. However, for them, it's really, really hard sometimes to initiate thing, things. So you might need to support them in the um, initiating things. And then Peacock, uh, this person is all about social recognition. They are motivated that they are able to provide services to people, to showcase them and be with people. And the core value for them is recognition. However, um, as they are like very um, open-minded, they are very out there, sometimes they need to check um, a little bit more on their behaviors to make sure that they are making the other people comfortable with with their behaviors. And uh, each, uh, each animal, each uh, personality type um, uh, has a work pattern and it's very distinctive work pattern. If you know this work pattern, you can easily identify a collaboration strategy with uh, this uh, personality type. So for example, all is uh, very system oriented. They're really great at analyzing complex data, finding right insights, making risk assessments. They are more on the introversial spectrum. Therefore, they prefer to work alone. They prefer to plan well ahead. And they prefer to bring the things at really high standard. So if you need to collaborate uh, with all, you need to talk to them from the data point of view. You need to respect their ways of working. Um, they need, you need to appreciate uh, their insights. And you need to allow them sometimes maybe a little bit more uh, time to deliver the tasks. Uh, from the Puma's perspective, these people, they are also system oriented. Uh, they are great uh, dealing challenges. If you need to troubleshoot and solve some things, reinvent things, this is the people. They are driving uh, things and they are actioning. 
they are extroversions and they are very good natural leaders. <clears throat> they really like to take control in the situation. So be very straightforward with these people, explain what you want and why, rationalize um, your request, and create a lot of space for these people to action and run with things. Um, dolphins. Dolphins are amazing with people. They are very people-centric. They have very high work ethics. Um, they have very high natural emotional intelligence. Um, we can call them a soul of the team. They are on introversial spectrum. They are natural team players. They like to have their routines and they want to stay outside of the spotlight. And um, they generally are avoiding um, leadership roles. To work effectively with these people and uh, preserve the soul of the team, you need to create a secure, predictable environment filled with empathy, appreciation, and please don't put them on the spotlight. They are really uncomfortable with this. Peacock. Peacocks are very people-centric. They're great in communication, negotiation, selling. Um, they are very creative at problem solving. They are extroverts and they are good team leads, good teammates. They really like to be with people. So please give them recognition. Create opportunity to provide services, showcase their talents and uh, be with people. So now you know um, which kind of type and personas you could have in uh, your team. So what if you need to bring someone new to your team or maybe you need to bring someone new to your project? Uh, what are you going to do? So first of all, um, we are uh, all very um, keen to um, bring the people who are um, uh, similar minded with us. They have a similar background. They have similar skill set and mindset because it's easy for us to communicate with them. We are thinking alike. We are talking alike. alike. However, you need to treat your team as a one whole puzzle. And each of you um, is a single piece of puzzle. And you need to complement each other. You need to be uh, very self-aware about uh, your gaps and your strengths, as well as your team um, gaps and strengths. And find the people who will complement these gaps. Therefore, it's always a good idea to hire people with uh, complementary skills, personas, different backgrounds, different mindsets. Also, it's really um, important to understand that you bring the people or you hire the people that you can see progressing forward. One of my uh, mentors in the past told me a really interesting thing, and I have taken this away with myself. They would never hire a person if they can't imagine that this person being their manager moving forward. And I think it's a really good way of thinking about uh, hiring people. It's really good to have someone that you can see progressing forward and you can see in future them being your manager. You would be happy to work with them. And obviously, as you have uh, some team, you have some specific personality types, you know them. You need to make sure that the people you are bringing in, they're really good fit for your team and they can easily work together and the harmony will be preserved in your team. So what is about team's productivity? How you actually can motivate people doing things? and following the strategy and delivering things and being really motivated. For some reason, some people think it's to deal with personal motivation, personal productivity and desires. In fact, um, it is to deal a lot with the leadership and how leadership is covering the needs of the team and covering their uh, desires. It's very similar to any um, product, uh, product uh, purchase experience. You would not invest money or time in any product if it does not cover your needs, right? 
is very, very similar. So here you can see a pyramid. Uh, we could say Maslow inspired pyramid. And I map the needs of the team from the basic one to more advanced uh, needs. And as you can progress from the bottom to the top, you can see that motivation, productivity, and impact will be also growing from my experience. So if you will start to you from the basics, um, basic, basic need of your team is ensuring that they are, have the salary paid, that they have um, vacations, that they have business tools, and they have the year set up. And when you cover these needs, people really feel secure. It might sound um, funny, but I've seen a lot of people being demotivated and unproductive when their vacations are not signed off and the salary is not paid in time. So this is really, really a basics that you would, as a manager, need to cover to fulfill their very basic need. Then the next one is making sure that your team and people working with you really onboarded to the work process. So they integrated to the process, they integrated to team members, they are communicating effectively, they are supporting uh, each other, they are supported by you in setting their KPIs and setting their, goal, their goals and they understand them. In this case, generally people feel included. They feel included and part of the team. The next one is making sure that team members are integrated in business. So this is about sharing the larger picture of the business, sharing the strategy and sharing reasons why their work is important, why their work is important for building this larger picture. And in this point, people started to feel valued. And last but not the least, it's a cherry on top is tracking your team members to the success. So in this case, you have their progression path defined. You know what they want as their next steps, and you're supporting them into progressing to these next steps. Uh, and of course, this is a cherry on top. And in this case, you should see and the highest motivation, productivity, and Im impact. So the fulfillment um, team needs is really fundamental to engagement, motivation, productivity, and the growth. And in my experience, as you progress uh, from the basic needs to tracking your team to success and covering these needs step by step, you will see um, improvement in impact, productivity, motivation in your team dynamics. Great. Um, last but not the least, I really would love to share with you some recommendation of uh, the inspirational books. So the first one um, book uh, is from actually a founder of the Emotional Intelligence. Uh, Daniel really contributed a lot with his uh, psychological and neuroscientific uh, research into the definition of the emotional intelligence. Um, he has a lot of different um, books. This is one of them um, that actually uh, focus more on the emotional intelligence and leadership. So the next one is uh, um, more about life examples uh, of uh, leaderships and different solutions and strategies um, that will make you thinking. And the last but not the least is more like autobiography about uh, the key things and key challenges that Richard Branson have to overcome um, um, when he was building a virgin, um, virgin empire. And he's really, really um, people manager and very inspirational leaders. So as we went through all the presentation, this is the key takeaways. Um, that I would like to share with you. First of all, um, we know that high-performing team should be aligned to strategy. They should be customer-obsessed, data-driven, empowered to make decisions, result-driven, and very curious about things and very creative in problem-solving. High-performing team leader should be very clear on strategy, objectives, have um, high emotional intelligence, 
be av available to cover um, back of their team, create a safe workspace, empower them and grow them professionally. And it's really important to acknowledge people's different personas, create collaboration strategy accordingly, hire and bring people with complementary skills that are really good fit to your team. And team needs fulfillment is fundamental to engagement, motivation, productivity. You need to know your team uh, needs and desires. So thank you very much uh, for uh, taking time with me today. I would love to hear your thoughts and your comments. Please share them. Please let me know which uh, things you would like to, um, to take away and you would like to put in practice and good luck.